Travellers passing through Melbourne Airport may face disruption this morning as crews responsible for refuelling Qantas planes take industrial action for 24 hours. The Transport Workers Union says refuelling staff have not received a pay rise for three years. And let's bring in the union now, the Transport Workers Union's National Secretary, Michael Kane. Michael, good morning to you. So why, why choose now for this 24-hour period? Oh, good morning, Pete. Well, as you know, industrial action is always a last resort, but these workers have been pushed to the limit. Um, they've been overworked and their paying conditions are going backwards. Just a bit of context, Pete, 60% of the work uh, that Rivet does is for the Qantas operation, Domestic, International and Qantas Link. Uh, Qantas, as we know, in the last week or so, has just posted a half-year profit of $1.4 billion. And while they're doing that, and Alan Joyce is out there making glossy announcements about new first-class pods, we've got this workforce that tops up the planes in Melbourne that hasn't received a pay increase for three years. And these workers who've been trying to negotiate a fair deal with Rivet for an entire year. So, you know, we've got a, we've got a problem here. Um, and these workers, as a last resort, are saying that um, we want rivet at the table, but we're also going to need some input from Qantas because they hold the purse strings. Well, that, that was my next point. Yeah, shouldn't you be striking against rivet rather than Qantas because they are the ones subcontracted? Yeah, well, we are striking against rivet. That's what the laws allow us to do. Um, and the thing about Rivet, of course, is that they have commercial arrangements that are squeezed by Qantas. See, this is Qantas's model. Um, outsource as many workers as you can to third-party operators so that you don't have to bargain with the workforce, but you have so much commercial control over the company you contract the work to um, that you can call the commercial shots. And that's what's occurring here. Rivet is essentially saying in these negotiations that they don't have the money to pay and they don't have the capacity to claw back uh, the money for fair terms and conditions. And that's not a very good position for us to be in in aviation, Pete, where we were trying to rebuild aviation after a succession of crises. Um, and, you know, we have written to Qantas yesterday uh, and we've said to Qantas that the logic of the situation is that they should sit down at the table with the Worker Bargaining Committee and Rivet um, so that we can nut out a fair arrangement here. $1.4 billion profit suggests to us um, that they can support Rivet to support good okay. security. So, so is that is that why you're striking now? Because that announcement only came what last week or the week before of that profit. So you think now's the time? Qantas has got cash again. We're going in. No, no. This is a, 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 an action that's taken because we haven't been able to get um, an outcome from Rivet. We've been trying to negotiate with Rivet okay. for a year, and um, you know, a year is a year. Uh, it's a long time to try and get a fair outcome. Uh, and so I think it's a last resort, as it always is. Um, but these workers, three years without a pay rise, um, the terms and conditions going backwards, um, they really are the heart of the aviation economy and they deserve a, a reasonable outcome. How disruptive will the strikes be this morning, do you expect? Well, of course, it's always regrettable when there is disruption, but there will be disruption today. That's the nature of industrial action. And we hope that uh, Rivet takes this into account uh, comes back to the table with a meaningful approach to us. Um, yesterday, we received an email from them, which was notable for two things. First of all, it didn't suggest that they were going to move at all. And secondly, it contained a threat, Pete. It said that if industrial action was taken, then Rivet and its customers, that is Qantas, would be forced to consider all actions available. Now, we know in the Qantas operations what all actions available could mean. They grounded the fleet in 2011. They've been found twice to have illegally sacked 1,700 workers in ground handling under the cover of COVID. So um, this is a dispute which might escalate. We hope it doesn't. And we want Rivet to come back to the table now so that we can get a reasonable outcome, okay. a fair outcome for workers who haven't had a pay rise just, for three just, years. Just finally here, when you say disruption this morning, I'm just thinking of the consumers, the passengers here. What sort of delays uh, can they expect? Cancellations too? Is that what you're suggesting there? Well, uh, we're not sure how Rivet and Qantas are going to deal with uh, this. Uh, the entire workforce is out uh, and they've had every opportunity to offset this. Uh, it's been yeah. a year of negotiation. How many people is that really, the entire it's workforce? Hands, it's, Rivet's, it's in Rivet's hands now, Pete. Rivet's and Qantas. How, how many people is that an entire workforce? Uh, there's 50 around about 50 refuelers okay. uh, and 
yeah, of course, they, they have a critical function in the airport. OK. Are there, are there workarounds for planes, though? Can they just go to other areas, other states? Uh, they'll be doing whatever they can to, to offset the effects of uh, strike action, as they always do. But the best way to offset the effects of this now and into the future, uh, sit down with the worker committee uh, and nut out a fair and reasonable deal that these workers can get paying conditions and an increase that they haven't had for three years. OK, Michael Kane, appreciate the update. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon.